Now, I already have Circus Bunny's Notebook version 3 installed, so let me just run it from the dock. And by default, uh, we have this Notebook Starting Point dialog box. Now, Circus Bunny's Notebook does come with a number of predefined templates, depending on the type of information that you want to store or the tasks that you want to do with your notebook. Now, you can prevent the Starting Point dialog appearing each time you start up just by unchecking this box here. And what I'll do is I'll start with a blank notebook, so I'll just say Cancel to the Starting Point dialog. Now, this is a standard blank notebook, and as you can see, we have a new feature here, which are the info flags. And these are just little flags that pop up at various points throughout the application to uh, give you some helpful usage tips. Now, you can configure these to either never show, show once, or always show, and that's configurable within the general tab of the preferences pane. Now, as you can see, the notebook itself is a perfect representation of a paper notebook, down to the ring binder on this particular format. We have a ruled page with a margin, we have a number of tab dividers that separate the notebook into different sections. And we also have a way of navigating through each individual page by using this page curl here. Uh, the minus represents going backwards and the plus forwards. So if we click on the minus, that will take us back to page three and then page two, and then forward again back to page four, which is our multi-dex. Now, the multi-dex is one of the powerful features of Notebook in that it represents a number of pages that are generated automatically by Notebook. Now, any text that you enter into a Notebook will be indexed virtually in real time, and you can use all these different index pages. As you see, indexed by different things, by text, by capitalized words, by numbers, uh, by internet address, to search for the information that you've entered into your Notebook. But we'll have a look at multi-dex separately. We'll have a separate section for multi-dex later on during the tutorial. Now, if we go back to the Contents tab, now the Contents page represents everything that's contained within your notebook, including pages that you add yourself. Uh, we have a single divider, which we can rename from this particular point, so let's call this our first section. And within our first section, we have a single page. And again, I can rename this page from here if I want to. And then if I want to jump straight to the page, I just click on the blue button, and that will take me straight there. Now, as far as the physical appearance of the notebook is concerned, you have got some control both over the individual pages and also the notebook itself. So if we just want to change one particular page, we can change the paper style. So say, for instance, we wanted to have uh, some graph paper, we can just select that option. And there we go, that changes the page for us. Let's put that back to ruled. So that will just change the page that you're actually on. Now, if you want to change the format of the entire notebook, what you can do is go to the inspector. So we'll just select Window Inspector and that will bring the Notebook Inspector. Now, the Notebook Inspector has been changed. There's a lot more features in the Notebook Inspector. It's also slimmer as well. I think it's 25% slimmer, so uh, it's easier to work with on smaller screens. So you can change your notebook paper style and font. Uh, you can change your backing and binder. So for instance, if you wanted a three ring binder, we can select that, a perfect bound, or even just a pad. We'll go back to spiral. And then various fonts and actions for tabs. If you want to change your default notebook for when you create new notebooks, if you just go to Notebook and then Preferences, uh, under Notebooks, you, there are two sections. Now, the top section defines your settings for all new notebooks, so you can change your paper style and bindings and just some of your default fonts. And at the bottom, you have settings which apply to all new and existing notebooks, but this time including the window style, so your border with paper holes, uh, your page curl turning control, and also your page turn animations. Now, there is also an entry for toolbar. Now, the toolbar has changed within version 3. We can have either a plastic or a wood toolbar. Uh, if you have a plastic, you can uh, use the default grey or select any particular colours, uh, or you can select the wood. I actually prefer the wood, so let's go with the wood. And uh, in fact, let's add a toolbar to this particular page. So we'll just say View Toolbar. And there we go, there's our wood toolbar. Uh, what I will do, let me just make this page bigger. We can just... Uh, drag it out and reposition. One tip I would suggest though, is if you're going to be using the inspector a lot, is that you customize your toolbar to include a link to the inspector. So if we just say view, customize toolbar, and just drag the inspector tool, and then say done. And that will now give us instant access to the notebook inspector. Now, before we look at adding content to pages, one nice new feature in version 3 is the ability to rip a page out of your notebook and open in a new window. Now, because we haven't saved this document as yet, this is just uh, reminding us this is going to erase our undo history, but that's fine. So we'll say continue to open, 
Right, and there we go. We now have this separate page ripped out of the notebook. So this is useful, for instance, if you want to refer to another page in your notebook so you can have both pages open at the same time. It's still part of the notebook. It just allows you to view it in a separate window. So uh, let's just close that. Go back to contents. And there we go. There's our page back in our notebook. So let's now have a look at some of the different types of pages contained within notebook and also how we can annotate the pages. Thank you.